Looks like a knight exploded on the floor. Let's get all this on and cut some tatami. Okay, we're gonna jump to the cutting real quick. There's two things that I wanna mention up front. This is the first time that I've cut tatami in this armor, and it's only the second time that I've worn this armor. So I'm gonna be showing you the cutting, and then I'm actually gonna break down some of the cutting, both with how I did in the cutting itself and also how the armor performed. So let's get to the cutting. Konnichiwa, Samurai James here. I'm gonna do a little bit of tatami cutting in my mid 15th century Italian armor. knife there wasn't it. So this particular sword is the Arms and Armor Bannock Burn. I picked this up at the Western Martial Arts Workshop uh, four or five years ago. I've sharpened it beyond what the factory sharpening was but it's a pretty nice sword. Um, it's a one of one. It's the only one that they made. So anyway that's the sword. I'm going to set it aside and we're going to come back to talking about the armor and the cutting. Okay so the armor and the cutting. You see there's a little bit of tatami on the ground in the back there. That was from a previous roll that I cut. I had a different set of arms on that simply weren't working very good at all. So I knew I wanted to set those aside because they're simply not gonna be viable. So the ones that I'm wearing were much closer in functionality to what I was hoping for, so I did wear them for this video. Now let's take a look at the first cut. And I'm doing this from the slow motion footage that I captured with my GoPro. So you see, square up my distance here and right here. This is something you should definitely not do, especially when you're not wearing armor. Don't cut towards your leading leg when you're doing an overhand cut. The problem with this is the sword is moving towards my leg and there's a chance that I would end up hitting myself with my own sword. That's obviously bad. It's especially bad when you're doing it with a sharp sword cutting to Tommy. It's not so much of a big deal in a tournament where it's, oh no, I've hit myself in the leg with a blunt sword. But this particular thing is basically safety rule number one. Ironically, I taught three people how to cut with sharps earlier in the day and had them cutting to Tommy. And I expressed, hey, don't cut towards your leading leg. The only thing I can think of is we were doing this at about uh, 5.30, quarter, six or something. So basically late in the day, I taught them cutting with sharps earlier today. Then we went to a formal swords class with a different teacher, then came back and armored me up. Then the armor wasn't fitting quite like I wanted. And I was just at a point of a little bit of flustered and exhausted with it. So I know better. I really know better. I normally don't do this, but it's here on video. So I definitely need to make note that, hey, don't do this. Anyway, onwards with the cut. Now this is a pretty good cut. You'll see that the tatami is actually still standing there and the sword is all the way through. So not too bad overall. You'll notice in the uh, pauldrons on my left and my right arm, the pauldrons have kind of flopped up off of the arm a little bit. Uh, shouldn't really be doing that, I don't think. So that's one thing that I need to take a look at. And we'll keep going with the cut here. This was really overextended. You can see that my wrist did what they call breaking, which is where the blade itself has gone much further down than my forearm has. This was just an artifact of a little bit of the wheel pommel, the gauntlets, and not being used to cutting like this. So, you know, I did make it through the tatami and it was a clean cut, but the form is a little bit bad because the sword went down so much for that. I overextended more than I needed to. Now we're going to come back up and you'll note that my footing is proper this time. So my left leg is forward, my right leg is back and I'm cutting from my left side to my right side. I am right handed. So this is my non-dominant side. And again, you can see that the pauldrons are kind of flopped up above where the arm armor is. So just something for me to keep an eye on for that. Boom, nice clean cut through, sword is through, tatami starting to fall. You can see on the right side, just a little bit of the pauldron kind of popping up there. It looks like the point maybe wasn't tied all the way or is a little bit floppy there. That may have contributed a little bit to the gapping. It's something I need to test out one more time, but let's keep going with the cuts. There we go. 
Now, you can see the pauldron is sticking back like that. It should be still sitting a little bit forwards. Part of this might be where I was leaning forwards more than I needed to. I think in part because with that first cut, I knew that my wrist broke and I had overextended. I think I was trying to lean a little bit to compensate and not break over so much. Moving on. Here we go. Now it looks like it's a little bit more back into place on the right side, at least as far as the top of the shoulder. And we're coming up and down. And right here, you can see I've got my right leg is forward, my left leg is back, cutting from right to left from my dominant side, again, not towards the leading leg. Whoosh. And on this one, I ended up breaking again. I don't know if it's because I was overexerting a little bit with the power since I'm a right-handed for that, but I did break again and I'm hunched forward. So this was actually worse than my first cut, unfortunately. But let's move on. I paused because the tatami basically fell almost straight down. If I had thought about it for one more second, I might have tried for a double cut to come up underneath. But I was so shocked that I got such a good cut in armor that it took me a second to realize what was going on. Now what you'll also see is the right pauldron is still continuing to kind of stick up like that. Uh, in between the upper rear brace here and the pauldron itself. So we're going to keep going with that. You see I pick up here, move my feet properly again, and end up pulling my right foot back to really lean into it, which I didn't need to do. The sword was plenty sharp to cut through the tatami, but a little bit of this is just seeing how the movement is. And we're going to slice right through. Boom. You can see that right pauldron is still giving me trouble. It's still just popped right up in the air like that. And if you noticed with the tip of the sword, because I was leaning forward so much and off balance, um, not so much off balance, but you know, I, I should have maintained a little bit more vertical on it. I didn't need to lean into the cut so much like that. I should have been upright. In the bottom right corner of the screen, you can see that I actually uh, had tipped one of the pieces of cut tatami earlier. So I didn't hit the ground with the sword, but I came darn close and was able to basically snatch that little tatami and throw it off to the side. So let's finish this up. And now as I bring it back up, we can see the right pauldron actually just dropped back down on me there. So that's a wrap for the cutting analysis. A few things that I learned with the armor. It was made accurate to the measurements that I provided him. However, a few of those are a little bit off from what I thought was proper and what actually is going to end up working properly. The arms that I got are a little bit too big, so I'm gonna actually have to reduce that a little bit. I was concerned that without a little bit of extra space that I might not be able to get my male shirt to fit all the way through. However, I was able to get it through fine with some extra space. And because of that extra space, the arm tried to pull away a little bit on the point where it was tied, but it was also hitting on the breastplate in front because it was sticking out a little bit more than it should. The breastplate itself fits very good around the midsection, but right in front, it sticks out a little bit too much. So I think I need to lose about a half inch off of each side to help pull it right back up tight. So that way I can get my arms across more. That really contributed to some of the poor cutting mechanics because I couldn't cross my arms like I wanted to. I was a little bit stuck out and I was really using my body to get through the tatami, which is not obviously what you're supposed to be doing, but that was just something that I ended up with that as, you know, the way that the armor was moving, that was the best that I could do with it. I'm happy I was still able to get through the tatami, but watching the video I could see yeah, that was really bad mechanics of getting through it, and that was just an artifact of how the armor was moving. But now that I have that video and I've been able to analyze it, I know exactly what else I want to change with the armor. I'm going to bring the upper arms up a little bit more to stop that gapping in between. I'm going to take a look at the pauldron, see if there's a little bit more articulation I can get to help with bringing it up overhead. And then as I mentioned, the changes with the breastplate. The legs fit pretty well. I didn't really notice any issues with those. I might have the upper part trimmed down maybe about an inch just to have it sit into place a little bit better. I had no issues moving around with it, but the one thing I noticed is that the strap that goes behind the greave was sitting below the little pin that holds it. It still worked fine. It just doesn't sit in quite the right place. This was, again, all made to my measure, so I just sent something that was a little bit off. So 
you know, I can measure the actual armor piece and make sure that he made it exactly to spec. So it's going to be going back out to the Ukraine, have some adjustments made to it and come back to me. Once I get it back and everything is fitting better, I'll be doing another video, assuming I can find some tatami since it's in huge shortage right now, where I'll be doing some cutting with some proper mechanics for it. I'll also cover the armor itself in a little bit of detail. I'll cover the strapping, the rivets, the buckles, the end plates. It came with a set of black straps and I've changed that out for the red ones with the brass. So I'll cover all the customizations that I did to it once I have everything back and modified accordingly and I'm able to get back into it. That's basically going to wrap it up for this video and I'll see you all in the next one. This is Samurai James saying sayonara.